have a simple to-do list application where users can either add tasks or mark them as complete, and then they go down here or mark them as incomplete. Now the behavior of this app is entirely client-side JavaScript and it communicates with our Rails application through a JSON API to persist the data. That way if I reload, uh, the tasks stick around. Now another feature of this app is the ability to mark all tasks as complete. We can see here if I click this, then all of the tasks are considered complete. However, this operation isn't very efficient. If we take a look at the network tab of the browser, we can see that it's performing a separate uh, request every time it needs to update a task and mark it as complete. Instead, it would be better if it did it all at once, which brings us to the topic of this episode, and that is uh, handling a batch of actions through a single request. One way to do this that would probably work quite well in this application is to add another controller action to handle this bulk behavior. So here we are in the tasks controller, which handles that update action. And what we could do is add an update mini action and then have this maybe take an array of IDs and then we can find the tasks and update them for the given attributes that might be passed in. However, what if we want to perform some other actions as well at the same time, perhaps uh, destroy some records or create multiple records, and maybe even perform some actions that are completely unrelated to tasks, all in a single batch request. What I'm thinking of is something like this feature provided by Facebook's Graph API called Batch Requests. This allows you to trigger multiple API actions in a single request by supplying an array of JSON data. So you uh, supply the HTTP method and the URL to trigger and so it will trigger those and provide the response status of each of them. One advantage of this approach is that it will allow us to trigger any number of controller actions in a batch without having to modify the details of our Rails application once we get it set up. So that means we won't need this update mini action, for example. Now to implement this batch request feature, I'm going to be using Rack Middleware. It may be a little bit of a hack, but it seems to work great in my testing. If we run the Rack Middleware command, we'll get a list of the middleware that each request is going to go through in our application. I do a walkthrough of this middleware list in episode 319 if you want to learn more about what each of these do. Now the question is though, where should we add our middleware to handle the batch API behavior? So this middleware is going to take a single request and simulate multiple other requests uh, through it. And uh, let's say, for example, we added it after this Rails logger uh, middleware, then it would log the batch request, but not the details of each of the individual requests it gets split up into. My preference is to add it uh, before everything, so it's almost like our Rails application is being triggered each time for each of the uh, separate uh, batch requests. Now, in order to add middleware to the top of our stack, we need to go into our application config file and call config.middleware.insert before, and then pass in zero as a first argument here, which will be the zero index, so it'll add it to the top. And let's call this middleware uh, batch requests. And I like to add middleware into a separate directory under apps, so let's make a, a middleware folder here, and then make a new file called batch requests. Now middleware is simply a class that has an initialized method that accepts a rack application that it will call and it has a call method that accepts a rack environment hash and then it can call that app through it, passing in that environment and then doing whatever it wants with the request or response. Now here we don't simply want to call the application once, we want to uh, parse the parameters that are passed in and uh, trigger this application multiple times for each of the different requests, uh, customizing the environment that we're passing into each one. But I'm not going to get into that quite yet, for now we want to only uh, trigger this behavior when our URL matches something specific because this uh, middleware is going to be triggered for every request in our application. So usually one of the first things you wanna do in middleware is make sure the path matches whatever condition that you want. So let's make sure that the uh, path info setting equals the slash uh, batch URL. So that way it'll only be triggered if we have a batch request. And then otherwise, it'll just delegate to the next middleware. So if it is a batch request and we want to trigger this request multiple times, uh, changing the environment hash, and then respond. I'm going to respond with a 200 OK response and a content type. Uh, let's set that to application slash JSON. And then we want to include a JSON uh, response of all of the requests that we've made uh, that were passed in. But in the meantime, though, let me just inspect this environment hash so we can check it out. 
All right, so after restarting our application, it should behave like the way it did before, unless we trigger the slash batch path in the middle where we'll pick it up and show us the details of that environment hash. So this contains information that's specific to this request that we'll need to change in order to simulate other requests. For example, the path info and the query string if that were present and the request method. And then finally, we have the rack input environment option, which is going to be the body of the request. Now there are some other settings here that it might look like they need to be changed, such as the request path and the request URI up here. But these are settings set by Webrick and not really part of the rack spec, so I don't think Rails uses them at all. For further details about the rack spec and what these environment options do, check out this documentation. Here it lists them out, and these are the ones that we might consider changing. So first of all, let's just try manually setting these environment options to simulate a different request than what is made. Instead of slash batch, let's do slash task.json, so it's a JSON request, and we have our uh, query a string, and this is going to be blank, and let's also do the request method, and that's going to be a get request. And then finally, we have a rack.input, which is the body of the request, and that's just going to be a string IO object. And we can just pass in any string we want into here. For now, we'll just use an empty string for a get request. So with these options set, let's just try calling our application with these new options and see what the response is. Keep in mind that you'll need to restart the application after making changes to the middleware, and then reloading this page, we get our uh, tasks are represented in JSON, so any request we make to slash batch is going to kind of be converted into slash tasks. Now I want to report the full response to the user, including the status, the headers, and the body of the response. So let's put this all inside of a hash here, with the headers and the body. And then we need to save this result uh, so that we can report it back to the client in an array. That way they can see all of their uh, responses for each of the requests that they passed in through the API. So let's say responses is that response, and let's convert this to JSON. Oh yeah, and that response needs to be wrapped in an array as well for rack. Now when trying this out, you may find that this error occasionally happens reporting a deadlock, and that's because the rack lock is not properly releasing the mutex lock. To get around this, you need to close the body of the response. So we can call body.close. Let's only do it if a body responds to that close method. Now I usually don't like using respond to, but it's pretty necessary here to keep this working and flexible with a variety of middleware. So let's try this out, reloading the page, and now it works. Our responses details are wrapped within an array. So the next step to finish up this middleware is to replace these static request values with dynamic ones based on the parameters submitted with this request. So uh, we don't have access to the params hash here though, so let's uh, create a request object based on rack request. And we just pass in the environment hash into this. And so this is going to allow us to access request parameters pretty neatly by just passing uh, the hash notation here and then passing the whatever we want to use on the uh, params hash. So this will look for a parameter passed in called requests, and I want this to be some JSON data. So let's call a json.parse here. And by the way, json.parse is pretty strict. If there are any uh, JSON errors, it will raise an exception. So you might want to uh, do some error handling here, but I won't get into that. Anyway, I expect this to return an array of request options that I can use to override the environment hash. So uh, let's actually map this and uh, let's call this override. So for these various settings, we want to create a new response for each one, depending on the request settings. So for these, let's map all these responses together. And that way we can return these responses in this uh, JSON result. Okay, so uh, this override settings that are going to be passed in here, let's have one called uh, method. And let's also make one called URL that will be both the uh, path info and the query string. So this, let's uh, take override and call this URL and split this based on the question mark. So if there is a query string, then it will be returned here. So that will give us the path and the query. And we can just pass these both in straight into here. And finally, we have our rack input, which will be a body. And I'll call toString on this in case uh, 
there isn't one. Now this is getting kind of messy here, so let's extract this out into a method. I'll call it uh, process request, and then pass in our environment hash and the override option. And so we'll do the same thing here, except passing in those settings, the environment, and the override hash. Now there is one little gotcha here that I want to address, and that is we're using the same environment hash every time for each of the requests, and they might be modified during the request. So instead, let's make sure to duplicate it. We can do a deep dupe in case there's nested hashes, and it's probably a good idea to do that here as well because the rack request call can uh, modify that hash. All right, I think that's everything. Our middleware should now be able to process multiple requests. I should probably call uh, join on this body. Anyway, so there we go. Now I've restarted my Rails app, so let's give this a try through curl and setting the requests parameter to uh, some JSON containing uh, request details. So we have our method and we can set that to get and let's do the URL of uh, slash, how about a specific task this time? And then we can actually perform this multiple times and maybe trigger different uh, URLs. So let's do task two as well. So let's fetch multiple uh, JSON data at once on the local host at the batch path. There we go, instant response nearly, and we have our responses hash containing all of the details. Now that we've got this working, let's try integrating this into our JavaScript. So the goal here is to have this mark all as complete link, uh, just trigger one request and update all of those tasks at once instead of each one being a separate request. Now here's what that coffee script looks like for that client side behavior, and it is somewhat complex, but I won't be going into too much detail in here because it really depends on what kind of a client side JavaScript framework you're using. I'm not really using any framework here, uh, just mustache to handle the template rendering. Anyway, I uh, have this complete all function on this class that gets triggered whenever someone clicks that link. Now this function is actually pretty simple. It just goes through all of the incomplete tasks and clicks on the checkbox for each one, actually simulating the user clicking on all of those incomplete tasks. And whenever a checkbox is clicked on, it triggers this update uh, function, which is going to uh, find the task and mark it as complete here or incomplete depending on the checkbox status. And then it's going to remove the checkbox and task from its uh, original list and then render it out again, which will render it in the view in the new list, and then save it to the database by triggering this Ajax request uh, for put to the JSON URL. So the save function is what I want to focus on changing here because instead of immediately saving a task whenever it changes, we can store all of these requests in a batch and then push those changes all at once to the server whenever we need to. So instead of uh, calling Ajax here, let's have a request array that we push these changes to, and we need to set this in the format that we have our uh, API. So this is the method, and that is the URL, which is already correct, and the data is going to be the body. Now we need to get the body in the proper format here, so we can do a dollar sign param in jQuery to uh, make it into an HTTP request body. And then I need to initialize this request uh, as an empty array. We can do that in the constructor here, just setting it to an empty array. So with this in place, any changes are not going to be immediately synced to the server. They're just going to be stored up in this array. So let's make another function, call it uh, sync. That way we can trigger this whenever we want to sync all of these requests to the array and trigger that batch request. So let's do a post request here that triggers that uh, batch URL and then pass in the request array here. But this needs to be formatted in JSON so we can use a json.stringify which is supported in most modern browsers, but you may want to add the JSON.js library to add backwards compatibility. And then we just need to set the request array to a zero. Now what you might want to do is move the old requests off into a separate array temporarily until you get the response back from here to make sure all the requests pass successfully. And then if they didn't, you can add them back to this array or report an error to the user as needed but I won't be going into the error handling details in this episode. Uh, anyway, when we uh, have the sync function, we just need to trigger it whenever we perform a save. But we may not want to uh, sync every time we save. We might want to let the uh, changes batch up. In that case, uh, let's have a variable to determine whether we want to uh, immediately sync those changes or not. And I like to call this offline. So let's have an offline variable 
so that way we can go into offline mode whenever we don't want to be contacting the server to sync the changes. So this way we can temporarily go into offline mode whenever we want to batch up those changes, such as in this complete all call, we can go offline, and then we can go back online when we're all done and call a sync to sync up those changes. All right, let's see if this works. I have a few incomplete tasks here, and when I click mark all as complete, it performs a single batch request and we have all the responses, yay. And if we change the status of a task, it immediately sends a new batch request. And if I reload, it should persist, it does. Now I think one of the killer features of doing this kind of thing is that it makes it really easy to support an offline mode. You can see I already have this partially set up here where I have this go offline link and clicking on it just changes the status to offline and you can go back online. And that link is just triggering this function which toggles the offline status and changes the link. So let's just add a quick call to sync on here so that it syncs any changes up when we go back online. Now if I try going offline and making some changes, then it's not going to perform any requests here until I go back online, and then it's just going to do a single batch request performing everything that I did while I was offline. So this is really cool and great for mobile apps that may have some kind of spotty connection. If you're doing this, you'll probably want to toss that request array into the web browser database so that way you can uh, persist it even when the user closes the session. Now, even though we do have this awesome batch API system set up, there are definitely still advantages of going with a separate controller action, such as the update mini action, which I showed at the beginning of this episode, because you can easily optimize this into a single database query instead of having separate actions trigger separate database queries. But this bulk update approach is fully compatible with the batch system we set up. We just trigger this URL request instead of the others. Now before I go, I do want to point out that there is something called HTTP pipelining, which can be used as an alternative to this uh, batch request system that we made. However, it does have certain limitations. It's not fully compatible across all web browsers, and also I don't think it supports any other requests besides GET requests. But anyway, adding a batch system is pretty easy to do with Rack Middleware. However, I wouldn't consider this production ready. It was kind of just an experiment or proof of concept idea I had in this episode. If you want to make this production ready in a public setting, you definitely want to add some uh, cases where errors might occur, so you don't want to uh, spill out details through exceptions in production. And also, uh, you probably want to limit the number of requests that you accept through here and other things. Also, I want to point out that batching the creation of records is pretty tricky because you don't have an ID to reference until you get the response back from the server. What you might want to do is assign some kind of unique identifier on the client side and then send that to the server that can be stored in the database so you can reference it without having to receive a response from the server. Being able to support adding tasks offline would be really cool and is something that's out of the scope of this episode but might be a cool exercise for you to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's all I have here. Hope you found it useful.